So, I actually enjoyed the Han Solo movie a lot more than I thought I would. But, to be fair, my expectations were super duper low. I had very little anticipation when going to this movie. Alden Ehrenreich does a very, very good job portraying Han Solo. Not the best, there are other actors that I think would have done a better job, but he did an okay job considering the task that he had. I've talked about previously how um, Harrison Ford is permanently ingrained in our minds as Han Solo, and we can't picture anyone else to play, to play him. Harrison Ford is Han Solo, and to have someone else just... I don't think anyone's going to ever, ever, ever agree with it. His backstory from, the, from Legends is kept mostly intact. He is from Corellia. He joined the Imperial Academy and got kicked out. He saved Chewbacca, which now has a life debt to him, and which is why he is following him around now. There was a scene that I enjoyed that after Han got kicked out of the Imperial Academy that he had to join the Stormtrooper Corps or something, and they were invading a planet. And it showed things from kind of the Stormtroopers' perspective where they're in the trenches and they're trying to take over a planet, which I found really cool. It had a kind of a, like a Rogue One kind of feel to it, focusing on war. But in saying that, I thought it was cool, but it felt a bit out of place. It just felt like they just need to throw in another action scene just for the sake of it. Paul Bettany plays Dryden Voss, which is, I guess, the villain of the film. He's hardly in it. I think there's only like three or four scenes that he's in. He does seem to be having fun with the role, at least. He just plays your generic Marvel, I mean, generic Star Wars villain. But I couldn't help but think, because his name is Dryden Voss, and I'm like, oh, his last name is the same as Quinlan Voss, the Jedi from the Clone Wars TV series. And I just thought, oh, I wonder if they're related in any way. Although, given that this takes place in a gigantic galaxy, there might be the slight chance that somebody shares the same last name. And I know Amelia Clark is popular because she plays Daenerys on Game of Thrones, but she, the movies that I've seen her in, like Terminator Genesis and this, I just don't feel she's fit the roles that she's been cast in. I'm not saying that she's a terrible actress per se, but I feel they could have got someone better. They talk about how she's done terrible things. Not Amelia Clark, her character, who's... I can't even remember her name. That's how forgettable she is. She's done terrible things to survive and all that, but we don't really see any of that. We just hear them, just hear them say it. They, there's no real showing what lengths she'll go to to survive. And I kind of feel she was just kind of shoved in there just so Han, Han would have a love interest. Woody Harrelson plays Beckett which he acts as Han Solo's mentor. Uh, Woody Harrelson does all right, but I, I didn't feel like he was made for the role or anything, and the character didn't really stand out to me that much, but he did an okay job. There's another kind of villain in the movie, Enfys Nest, and they're barely in it either. L3 was pretty cool. Um, there was this whole thing about her wanting to liberate other droids and try and make them revolt, against organics, I guess, people and aliens. And she keeps trying to get them to um, rise up against their owners, I want to say. Um, a lot of people are complaining about this, um, saying that it's more social justice warrior shtick that we've had, like, in The Last Jedi. But I feel that this kind of fits more because... Especially in the New Hope, we could see that droids weren't really treated that well. Like when um, Owen and Luke are purchasing, purchasing the droids, they're kind of rude to them, cut them off when they're talking. You speak Bocce? Of course I can, sir. It's like a second language to me. I'm a yeah, right, shut up. And they're buying them, so they're, they're treated as like kind of... They're treated as property. And when they're in the Moss Eisley Cantina, the owner's like, no, nah, we don't serve their kind here. Get out. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. <laughs> what? You're droids. They'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. Why don't you wait out by the speeder? We don't want to be in trouble. I heartily agree with you, sir. And in this movie, they talk about how they don't serve droids in that uh, bar that they were in when they were 
playing Lando for the Millennium Falcon. So I feel it kind of fits in the Star Wars universe if it is a little bit forced. And Donald Glover plays Lando Calrissian. I did talk about how I thought he was perfect for the role, he was a perfect fit, he looked like him, um, but I wasn't underwhelmed by his performance. He did a good job, but he didn't do as good a job as I thought he would. He had kind of the same mannerisms and behaved like him, but there was something a bit off, probably because you know it's a different person. I'm not really sure what it was. But overall in the movie, it feels like not a lot happened. The first act is a bit slow. It's a bit, it's a bit slow to get started this movie. Second act is where things start to get more exciting. There's more stuff happening. All the characters are together, interacting with each other. They're doing the Kessel Run. That's all fun. And by the end of the movie, everything seems to kind of fall apart and you're losing interest by that point. It is... I believe the movie is about two and a half hours long, which I felt that's it's half an hour too long. By the end of it, I was just just wanting it to end, but which is not usually the case with me in a Star Wars movie. Not much happens in the movie. They do the Kessel Run, and Han is set upon his path towards a new hope. That's basically it. So basically, this movie didn't really need to happen. I kind of feel it was just kind of a cash grab by Disney because they just wanted to try and make more money. And I feel that, but all that being said, I did enjoy this movie for the most part. It wasn't the best Star Wars movie I've seen, obviously, but I didn't, didn't have a terrible time. So I'm just going to go back to a straightforward rating system and I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Not terrible, but not great. And of course there are better Star Wars movies out there like this one. Thank you for watching my little humble review. Remember to like and subscribe. And to all my current subscribers, if you could all make 10 to 20 extra accounts and subscribe to me, that would be fantastic. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all next time.